income drops to 0%, no tax payable. So I think usually people are aware that once they reach the age of 60 and start drawing a pension or take lump sums out, that they can take the money out of super tax free. But it's really important that you understand that the earnings rate within the, the tax rate within the super fund is zero once you've got a pension started. And I'll go through some case studies later tonight to show you uh, how that can benefit you. Okay, so one of the really hard things these days is trying to work out how we can maximise the amount of money that we can get into superannuation. And there's a couple of different um, types of contributions that you need to understand about. And the first one is your concessional contribution cap limits. So concessional contributions are what used to be called deductible contributions. So contributions that someone has made on your behalf and where a tax deduction has been claimed. So any employer contributions, including the 9% SGC, salary sacrifice pre-tax into superannuation. Um, if you're self-employed and you're making personal tax deductible contributions, they'll all be counted towards the concessional contribution cap limits. And the limits currently are 25,000 per annum per individual if you're under the age of 50 and 50,000 if you're over the age of 50. So um, the, those are the limits for this year and next financial year. From 1st of July 2012, under the current legislation, those limits will drop to 25,000 per annum for everybody, regardless of age. Now, just on um, Monday this week, the Assistant Treasurer and um, Minister for Superannuation, Bill Shorten, released a consultation paper where the government is proposing that from 1 July 2012, they may allow you to still put 50,000 a year in if you're over 50, but as long as your member balance is under half a million dollars, okay? So that may help some people, may not help others. And there's a couple of important debates going on around about that at the moment. One is, if you're um, in a pension phase, is your pension account going to count towards your account balance? So we're not quite sure how it will all work, or even if they will um, update the legislation. So at the moment, it's important to take advantage. If, you are, if you're over 50, it's important that you try and get as much into super as possible. And if you're under 50, it's important you try and you know, maximise your contributions every year because you can't catch it up later. Um, if you turn 50 at any stage in the financial year, you get that higher $50,000 uh, contribution limit. And the cap applies to all concessional contributions. So if, for example, you have um, two or three different employers who are contributing to super for you, or you change, change jobs during a year, you've still only got your one cap limit that you have to come under. Um, if you go over the cap limits, you will pay tax at 46.5% um, at penalty rates. And importantly, any amount excess to those contributions is also then going to count to your non-concessional contribution cap limits. And I'll take you through how all of that works in a second. So our, with our non-concessional um, contributions, these are what used to be called undeducted. So just to keep things interesting, we keep changing all the terminology all the time. That's a, that's a government thing. But these are the, the undeducted. So these are contributions that you put into super yourself and you don't claim a tax deduction for them. So they go into super tax-free and they stay tax-free forever. So currently you can put in 150000 a year every year. Or if you're age 64 or younger on the 1st of July of a year, you can actually do a, a bring forward provision where you can contribute for up to 450000 in one year, so three years worth in one, and then nothing for the next two years. So that might help if you've sold an asset or you've inherited some money or won the lottery and you want to put some money into super, that can sometimes help. Um, it's important, it's really important here that you don't get tricked up with these and that you, you understand what's happening. So if, for example, you're self-employed and you um, decide that you're going to contribute your full 50000 into super as a tax deductible concessional contribution, you have to make sure you've got enough income to claim against that. So if, for example, I've done that, but my taxable income for the year only ends up to be 40,000, then 40,000 of that contribution will be counted as a concessional contribution. The other 10 will be counted as a non-concessional. And if you've, already, if you've also made your non-concessionals, it can um, cause a problem. If you're contributing after your 65th birthday, there's a couple of things that happen. Uh, the first one is you have to satisfy a work test every year to be able to con contribute after 65. And that's just simply that you've worked more than 40 hours in any 30-day period during the financial year. Um, and the other thing is, after 65, you can't take advantage of the bring forward rules anymore. You can only do your 150,000 each year. Now, if you get it wrong, um, the penalties can be quite severe and it can be up to a 93% tax on, on the mistake. So if I just show you how that works, um, 
I've got, a, I've got a client called Bill who wants to maximise his contributions and he's instructed his employer to salary sacrifice his full 50000 a year into super because he's over the age of 50. So on the face of it, that sounds OK, except um, Bill has forgotten that his employer is going to be contributing 9% of his $80,000 salary, so 7200 into super as well. So that 7200 from the employer is now excess to his concessional contribution cap limit and would be taxed at 46.5%. Um, it, it can get worse than that though because last year Bill sold a property and he put his full 450000 into super as a non-concessional contribution. So because the one counts towards the other, we've now exceeded both caps. So I'll just show you how that might work. So we've, up here we've got our um, 50,000 concessional cap limit, we've made 57,200 in total contribution, so we're 7,200. That excess amount will get taxed at 46.5%, so we've, we've lost half of it um, there. Then because it's excess to that cap, it also counts to the non-concessional contribution cap limit. So we're now over on that cap limit as well because he's already done his 450 last year. So we've now exceeded both cap limits and the same amount of money gets taxed again at another 46.5%. So he's now lost most of the employer contribution in tax, 93%. So you really, you know, you don't want that to have happen. Um, the tax office is quite behind with these excess contributions tax notices. They send them out separate to your, to your tax return, so you often won't know until well after your personal tax return is lodged. Um, they've just finished sending out the 2008 notices and they've started sending out 2009. There was 24,000 people caught in 08, um, so, and we expect the numbers will increase in the 09 and the 10 years, so just be careful about these ones. It can be even worse than that, so you can get hit with 138% tax on your mistake, and this is a really nasty one to be careful of. So um, a lot of people have family trusts, and they get into the habit of making distributions from their trusts. So if we have a distribution from a family trust into a super fund, that is going to be an issue. So in this case it was $100,000. It's automatically classified as a contribution because it came from a third party. And because it did come from a third party, it will be specifically treated as a concessional contribution. So whether or not you intended to claim it as a tax deduction, it will be treated as if that's what you wanted to have happen. So assuming that... Um, this person has already put their 50,000 in for the year, the whole 100,000 would be um, excessive and taxed at 46.5%. Now if the same client has also already put in their full 450,000 uh, last year, it's going to then be excessive against the non-concessional contribution limits as well and taxed at another 46.5%. And then just to really sting you, um, at the end it'll be classified probably as non-arm's length special income in the super fund and taxed at another 45%. So total tax of 138. So really um, quite nasty. And we see people um, where these sorts of things happen just through not understanding how they all impact on the other. Um, if you do get it wrong, um, you, you may be able to apply to the um, ATO uh, commissioner, sorry, for discretion. So you can apply to the um, apply to the ATO commissioner to say, look, it was um, special circumstances, I didn't mean for it to happen, can you um, apply a zero tax rate rather than hitting me with the penalty tax rate? So what do you reckon the tax office commissioner is going to do if you apply for that? So very limited circumstances, will they let it through? Um, out of those 24,000 people that were hit with excess contributions notices in 2008, there was only about, a, um, a th um, about 30 per cent of those Sorry, sorry, only 8% of those um, actually applied for special circumstances. So there was only 8% that thought that they might be able to have a, a go at it. And out of those, only 30% were successful in having the Commissioner's discretion applied. And usually they'll only um, apply Commissioner's discretion if the circumstances were beyond your control. So um, as an example of how that might happen, if you've told your employer to put in say $25,000 for the whole year as a salary sacrifice and including the 9% SGC. But they unfortunately made the June super contributions in July, they paid it late, and then in the next year they put the whole amount in the one year so you were over because the employer was late on, the, on their June contributions. You may be able to get through on that basis. But it really usually has to be where the mistake was something beyond your control. If you just um, did it accidentally or did it not understanding, they won't apply the discretion. 
So I guess um, one thing I'd like to say to all of you tonight is if you've been making contributions through the year or someone's contributing on your behalf, go and have a look at how much has already gone in for the year and just do the math and make sure that you're not going to be over um, before June. Um, if you are, then take steps to see whether you can um, stop the contributions or reduce them.